wanna see you. I don't wanna hear you tonight. Hey everyone, welcome back. This is the promised follow-up to my Ash video I put out yesterday. If you haven't seen that one yet on how DE completely broke Ash, please go check it out. I'm not gonna go over all the quirks of Bladestorm changes we discovered in that video since they are extensive and well documented. That Ash video is also listed in the description and pinned comment for reference. Today, we're looking at how we managed to turn Vulcan Blitz, a Jack Attack Augment, into a tool to significantly improve performance on Bladestorm if you want to use Ashes 4 as your main source of DPS. Think of this as a more mobile version of a Fatal Teleport Mark for Death setup. While I would recommend using a weapon to work alongside Ash because the KPM is still questionable, this Bladestorm setup does in fact hit 100 KPM entirely off ability kills alone. Normally, Bladestorm itself only sits at around 60 kpm, and this is due to the animation times of the finishers happening in succession, slowing down the TTK to kill all marked targets off. However, this kind of Ash playstyle I'm using today requires extremely active play, because you theoretically cannot kill groups of enemies you don't mark. You need at least one enemy marked within 6 meters of them for today's strand to work. While Vulcan Blitz can kill unmarked enemies as well, it only has a 6 meter blast radius. Therefore, the main purpose of Vulcan Blitz is to kill clusters of enemies instantly, letting you not have to wait on each finisher animation, while taking advantage of Bladestorm's extreme damage scaling to ensure Vulcan Blitz will proc unmarked enemies at 100% chance. A lot of words, but it's easier to visualize what we're trying to accomplish in the simulacrum here. One or two Bladestorm kills to kill off all 20 marks and get Bladestorm off cooldown since you cannot recast it until all marked enemies are dead or all finisher animations are completed. As a reminder, Bladestorm is now a full pseudo exalt due to DE changes. Previously, only attack speed mods on your melee would affect Bladestorm. The only other way to buff scaling was with stealth multipliers such as Savage Silence or Roar for the Slash Dots. Bladestorm consists of three types of hits. You have the ability hit that force proc slash, the resulting slash proc, but also the lesser known clone hits. You cannot see the amount of damage the clone does. The clone is the portion of Bladestorm that has become a true pseudo exalt and now scales with almost all melee mods. This includes base damage, elementals, banes, finisher damage, which did not work before. Therefore, Bladestorm, who was already strong, now has astronomical scaling and can easily one-shot anything in the game that's susceptible to finisher animation so long as you bring a melee weapon with some kind of build. Optimal setups let the clone do damage cap, which is over 2 billion damage, but standard melee builds would still let it hit into tens of millions, which is good enough. Also, unlike normal pseudo exalts, the innate original damage of your unmodded melee also affects clone damage scaling. The higher this number, the harder Bladestorm will hit. For further details, as always, please check my previous Ash video I listed in a description and pinned comment. Therefore, the premise is simple. If any melee can make Bladestorm do absurd damage now, then everything should one-shot. The only limitation of Bladestorm is the finisher animation time. We should look at a way to create AoE on Bladestorm finishers so that it kills crowds faster. Every clone kill from Bladestorm triggers Vulcan Blitz, and enemies dying to Vulcan Blitz can also trigger Vulcan Blitz. But Vulcan Blitz does percent HP damage as Blast, which sucks against armor. Therefore, we ironically need to subsume an AoE armor strip on Ash to turn Bladestorm kills into miniature AoE nukes and cause a chain cascade. Terrify is the best option, because it doesn't require that much strength, and Bladestorm doesn't need strength, and because it goes through walls. You do not need to remain at the place where you marked enemies with Bladestorm to kill them. Therefore, Terrify allows you to armor strip all nearby out of sight enemies you previously marked. It also armor strips nearby enemies within range of Vulcan Blitz explosions that you failed to mark. It also allows Vulcan Blitz to kill through walls since Vulcan Blitz goes through walls but sucks against armor. Now that you understand the premise of this Ash setup, I can show you how I built him. The first thing you might notice about this Ash is that I'm running Arcane Guardian and Arcane Blessing. Why? Ash being invisible screws up enemy pathing. Not only are we using an AoE armor strip ability on Ash, but we also will not be going invisible. We're building a hell tank face tanking Ash to intentionally draw aggro to our location. Now this doesn't mean you can stand in place, in fact, you won't be because Bladestorm DPS always requires you to run around all over the place constantly to mark enemies for killing. Evasion parkour and less incoming damage are a natural consequence of playing this Ash setup. Therefore, Arcane Blessing, Arcane Guardian, and Adaptation are more than enough to survive. 
TLDR, be fast on your feet. You will obviously still draw aggro no matter what, so enemy pathing won't be a problem. This means you're free to subsume Terrify over Ashes 1, 2, or 3. Personal preference, Invis only lasts 5.4 seconds on this build, so really it's probably only useful for killing Acolytes. Or you might want to keep access to Fatal Teleport, I don't know. You do not need much duration, since that only affects Smokescreen. Terrify's armor strip by default already lasts 25 seconds and is still 17 seconds at 67 duration. Since Bladestorm nukes everything, this shouldn't be an issue. Enemy radar lets us stack with Primed Animal Instinct to know where to head next for a Bladestorm marking due to 63 meter detection radius. Adaptation can be as high rank as you're willing to fit, but it is already fully functional at lower ranks. Equilibrium will funnel all our energy back via health orbs since we only intermittently nuke with Bladestorm when we mark enough enemies. This gives time for our Panzer to spread viral quills, which will all count as Petasis and thus will shower us with health orbs from Synth Deconstruct. You'll be able to pick up health orbs even at full HP due to Synth Fiber, and we want as much range as possible so I've resorted to Overextended. This does penalize our strength rather heavily, but because Duration is a dump stat, we can afford to run two strength mods to hit 139. To bridge the gap to 167 required for Terrify to full strip in a single cast, I resorted to Matarai Focus School. This both grants plus 40 strength from Sling Strength, but also plus 50% casting speed since Terrify is annoying to cast. Of course, there are alternatives to this. If you're feeling lucky, you can run Blind Rage instead of Transient Fortitude and Umbral Intensify. This frees up a slot at the expense of dropping to 105 efficiency. You can now slot Stretch, increasing range to 235. This will further push Terrify's cast radius from 28.5 meters to 35.2 meters radius, or a 53% total area increase. Alternatively, you can also bridge the missing strength gap to 167 with Red Archon Shards, so long as you gain at least 28% more strength. Casting speed shuns also help if you aren't using Matterize Power Transfer or Natural Talent. You basically go around marking things with Bladestorm, cast Terrify and uncast Bladestorm, and everything dies instantly. Whether you cast Bladestorm or cast Terrify first does not matter, just make sure that they are in quick succession of each other for maximal effect. Acolytes can be killed to your liking, be it a Brahma, Fatal Teleport shenanigans, or something else. The Vulcan Blitz setup is also simple. It's the same as our Inidem breakdown from our previous Ash video, but with Vulcan Blitz. We're building for Bladestorm and clone damage instead of swinging the melee itself. Therefore, base damage, condition overload because it works now, finisher mods, primed bane, and a single elemental. We still want attack speed since it speeds up animations as well as quickening giving faster combo ramp up on Bladestorm for that sweet 3.7 times damage multiplier 12 times combo. Of course, a dedicated slot for Vulcan Blitz so that we actually have that AoE firepower for a Chain Cascade. Do keep in mind that Arcane Strike and Attack Speed Warframe buffs do not affect Bladestorm animation speed. Panzer is the same as always, viral to spread quills which will proc Synth Deconstruct for all the health orbs we need on Ash with Equilibrium. Since we're not bringing Arcane Energize, Synth Fiber lets us pick up health orbs even at full HP, then the standard Mortar to keep us alive, Panzer to give itself infinite lives, Radar, and Vacuum. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe! Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible, like I've been doing with Duviri. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. Don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time!